So then I was like, you know that's not in the Bible, right? And she was like, Say what? 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 Welcome to another edition of That's Not in the Bible podcast, the podcast where we talk about popular worldly topics and whether or not they're biblical. Uh, joining me today are two distinguished guests, Lauren Locke, otherwise known as L Squared, and uh, Drew, the myth, the legend, Burtis. Um, now, now, Lauren, uh, it is uh, actually public knowledge that you can dunk from the three-point line. Oh, 100%. Yeah. The, the, amazing. Drew, Only her. Drew, it says here in your repertoire, which, again, I found odd that you would send this to me, but are those prescription glasses? Mm. No, they're not. I'll be honest with you, they are not. <laughs> Ooh, I like wow. the look of them, which is probably very vain. All for style. <laughs> and All moving on style. to our topic for today, <laughs> self-love and self-care. No. <laughs> Probably very vain. No, uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be a great time. But seriously, they look good on you, dude. Thank you. I, I don't care if they're prescription that. or not. Thank they you. look good. You look thank good. Thank you. Uh, Lauren, uh, let's, just, let's just, for the people out in the audience who don't know who you are or who I am. By the way, my name is Jordan Ross. Uh, I just won the Mr. Beast lookalike down in Rochester. So I, mean, I have none of his money or his charisma, but we make do. I, you've got good charisma. Well, oh, would sure. you say that? Uh, yeah, he has good okay. charisma. 100%. Okay, okay. okay. and we're, we're ending the podcast because <laughs> this is not for my vanity. So, Lauren, tell me, you are the volleyball coach at the Word of Life Bible Institute. You are currently in a master, master's program uh, for biblical counseling. How's that going? It's going well, learning a lot. I am in school at Bob Jones Seminary, and all right, all right. I love studying counseling. We love Bobby J. Uh, <laughs> and it says here, it says here you're a military kid. So what was that like having a dad who's in the military? Yes, my dad is a Marine, retired Marine. All right. Um, so definitely biased to the Marine Corps. Mm. All right. Superior to all the other branches, Semper of course. Semper Fi, Semper Fi. Yeah, you got it. Good there job. There we go. Come on. I know a little bit of Latin here or there. <laughs> but we'd move a lot. So every two to three years, we've moved a lot. Probably like mm. 19 times. So. Ooh. Definitely a lot. Name three states that you have lived in. Let's see. North Carolina, California, Texas. Wow. All, that was everywhere. She East just coast, hit the yeah. East yeah. coast, west coast, yep. right in Mexico. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, Pretty much. Uh, Drew, uh, just a little bit here. You, are, you have completed your MDiv. For those of you who are more simple-minded like me, I didn't know what an MDiv was. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's a master's, <laughs> master of divinity. Yeah. So you are a master uh, of divinity. That's the only flaw with the degree title. I am not a master of divinity. I you don't studied know it for three oh, years. Okay. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, you are currently serving as the dean of students for the World Life Bible Institute. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've Go got Huskies. my uh, Word of Life Huskies. Amen. Hoodie on. Amen. And actually, uh, you were on that alumni team that beat the Word of Life Huskies, weren't you? Yeah, uh, for the the men's basketball uh, Huskies team that's in the audience, uh, they don't like to be reminded of that. But yes, the alumni team in during homecoming weekend. That's right. Beat the men's basketball. Drew team, Burtis, so. basketball aficionado, youth pastor, lover of golf, and at one point a barista. At one point in my life, still a desire. <clears throat> so just a little bit about the that's not the Bible podcast. Make sure you guys. Sitting right here, we have a room full of 300 middle schoolers, high schoolers that are part of a live video podcast. Make sure you go back, check out the other episodes, check out this episode. Yeah. Last week's episode, we talked about uh, we talked about the we talked about the afterlife and the spirit realm. Yeah. Pretty cool, pretty interesting stuff. Yes. Uh, just a side note, like if you're a believer in Christ, stay away from Luigi boards. 
Go and check out the video. Uh, <laughs> if you want to know what I, if you want to know more, go check out the video. Um, but there will be many more coming. So again, this podcast, we just want we just want to talk about popular worldly topics, and we just compare them to what God's word says. Is it in the Bible? Is it biblical? Does the Bible affirm any of this? So I'm going to say a few phrases, and I just want to gauge the audience and see if maybe they've ever heard any of this. How about this? Live your truth. Mm. Mm. Come on. Can we get some snaps up in here? Can we get just snaps? You do you. Mm. Whatever makes you feel good. Into the mic. Oh, that's an ASMR. That's an ASMR. (laughs) Oh, here's the last one. Here's the last one. Treat yourself. What a great Parks and Rec reference. Right, right. Now, we've heard all of these before, right? At some point, in some way or another, in some some style or fashion. And, Drew, you kind of mentioned this, or you kind of had the perfect segue. I should have saved your glasses for right now. Um, (laughs) But we will be talking about self-love and self-care and whether or not it's biblical. Yeah. So, with that being said, I need to pull up my notes, but what do we got? Self-love, self-care, what does the world say about it? Yeah, so self-love, I'm pretty sure most people have heard this term a lot Mm -hmm. and are pretty familiar with it, but to define it specifically, I would say self-love is a regard for one's own well-being and happiness. So I want to point out two specific things in this definition, one of them being regard. Mm -hmm. So they consider, they believe, and seek out what is their own Mm well-being and what truly makes them happy. So that's the second thing I want to point out is happiness. Mm -hmm. So they consider their happiness to be the most important aspect. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and that's huge because I would say on the same, in the same vein, the idea of self-care is very, very similar, right? Mm -hmm. Self-love is this regard for your own well-being and happiness, whereas self-care moves from not just the regard to the practice. So very simply, the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness. Mm -hmm. And the common thread in both of those is happiness. Mm -hmm. And what you find is at the center of self-love and self-care is happiness. And it becomes mm-hmm. so focused on you and your own fulfillment, which is why we want to talk about this, because does the Bible actually talk about that? Sure. Y- your own happiness and you being kind of at the center. Yeah, that's a great question. So I think let's spend some time diving into what does the Bible, well, before we go on, I know you have an illustration. I do have an illustration, for yes. exactly yeah, yeah. what we're talking about right now. Yeah. So yes. don't let me get ahead of myself. Go ahead. Oh, you're good. Please so take it away. So in this conversation, we often hear a really common example. Mm-hmm. Um, so <clears> if, <throat> if you've ever been in an airplane before, which I personally love traveling, so I've heard this so many times. Mm-hmm. But, the, you know, the flight attendant gets up as you're about to fly, mm-hmm. and she says, in the unlikely event <coughs> of, <laughs> of that cabin pressure, <laughs> lots of cabin pressure, the panels above your head are going to open up and these air masks are gonna come down, oxygen masks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she has the whole put it over your nose and mouth, pull it on your, but the key phrase that she says there is secure your own mask before helping others. Mm -hmm. So that illustration really does a good job at illustrating their point of, you need to take care of and love yourself before Mm -hmm. you take care of or love other people. Mm -hmm. Because in that illustration, if you weren't to not put your mask on, you'd have no air and you would pass out and be of Mm -hmm. use to nobody. Yeah, I've heard that before. And you know what? Honestly, uh, I hate flying. Uh, So I don't want to think about like Mm. a plane that's not able to fly. So I've heard that before. And maybe it works on an airplane, but I feel like we take that motto, that little use my own mask first and then use it on some, you know, and then help someone else. I feel like we take that and we we use that a lot, maybe more than we should. Well, it sounds good, right? It does. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds right. It makes sense. Mm. Logical. Makes sense. And we, and we take that into this field where it's like, okay, well, I, that must be what I, I have to do with my whole life, right, is take care of myself first before I take care of anybody else. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. <laughs> so, so really, let's dive in. Let's take that airplane. So let's take that airplane analogy and let's dive into what does the Bible say about self-love? Mm. 
I love this topic. <laughs> so let's first go to Matthew 22. All right, if you're following along out there with your Bibles, Matthew chapter 22. Yes, I'm going to start reading in verse 36 and read to verse 40. So Matthew 22, 36 says, teacher. So who's talking right now is the Pharisees. So the Pharisees go to Jesus and say, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he, that's Jesus speaking, and he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now, this passage is often used by Christians as an example of where we see self-love in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, precisely. So they would take that phrase and mm. say, there is an underlying command sure. that you need to love yourself. Mm. It's that same ideology that we talked about at the beginning. But let's take a little peek. What is this actually saying? Mm. So what we see here is Jesus, he starts with one command. He says, love God. Mm. Love God with all your heart, yeah. with all your soul, and with all your mind, which encompasses totality. Yeah. So basically he's saying, love God with all of who you are, every single part of your being, mm -hmm. love God. Yeah. So there's command number one, love God. Command number two says to love your neighbor. And that as yourself, think back to English class. Mm -hmm. What does like and as mm. mean? It's a comparison. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not a command. It's yeah. not a third command. It's a comparison. So it's assuming that we already love ourselves. He's saying in that same way that you love and take care of and cherish yourself, you need to love other people. Because we're all professional self-lovers. We're all really good at it. Yeah. But he yeah. flips that around to a radical, love people in the way that you love yourself. Right. Nobody really ever needs to train somebody to love themselves. I mean, when we're, when we're children, I mean, think about that. What do we, what's one of the first words we learn how to say is, is no. Mm -hmm. No, we want, no, I don't want to share my toys. No, I don't want to share my food. No, I don't want this or that. It's yeah. like because self-preservation, right? Or self, uh, so anyways, even just looking down, I'm looking at verse 40, and it says, Jesus continues and says, on these two commandments. Yep, just in case you weren't convinced. Just in case you thought there were three only commandments, two. that it was love yeah. God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. He said, hold up, hold up, just on these two commandments. But anyways, John, or Drew, sorry, sorry, Drew, the last two podcasts have been with John. <laughs> and I mean, we I love John Locke. We, so. Yes, yeah, we're on team John. Yeah. We're on team John. That's great. Love John. Especially... Uh, Especially me. Yeah, yeah. I love Lauren, him a lot. Lauren has a special connection to John <laughs> somehow. I, I can't forget. Like, I can't remember how that goes. But go yeah. ahead, Drew. You got something to say about that? Well, I, th I think just to carry on to your point, right, L like running back into verse 40 there, right, on these two commandments hang mm. all the law and the prophets. If you look at love God and love others, that is the encompassment of the Ten Commandments. Yeah. 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 Like, like that's, if, if you were boiled the Ten Commandments down, it's love God and love others. And mm. it's only two commands. That, that's it. Yeah, um, yeah so and there's no room to throw in the self-love command. Mm, love right. God, love others. You have fulfilled every command. Yeah. That's there's true. no room for a self-love yeah. command in there. Yeah, that's mm. so good. Yeah, so, so with that, right, we've talked a little bit about Matthew 22 and how it, it often gets it's misconstrued. So what does the Bible really instruct us to do then? What does, what does self-love, self -love, you know, what does the Bible really say about this? What, is it, how, what are the instructions for that? Well, I think we have to... Uh, one, go back to this sure, kind yeah. of the misunderstanding of the common thinking, right? Yeah. And, and that's this. I can't love others un, until I love God, and I can't love God until I love myself. Sure, that's yeah. like the logic that works backwards. Mm -hmm. um, but we actually have to kind of dismantle that a little bit too yeah, yeah. and go back to First John. Um, and I love the book of First John. Um, the BI students in the room love the book of First John because it's taught by our very own Mark Strout, oh, right. and he is he is great. Hello, friends. Um, but First John, if you're if you're following along in your Bible, First John chapter four. I'm just going to read verses seven to eleven, mm -hmm. and I kind of want to break this down just a little bit. It says this, beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, mm -hmm. and whoever loves has been born of God and mm -hmm. knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Yeah. In this is love, not that we have loved God, 
but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And I want to kind of just hinge on really verse 10. In this is love. Actually, verse 9 too, right? The love of God was made manifest among us. But verse 10 talks about the fact that true love actually comes from the fact that God loved us first. Mm -hmm. It's not that we loved him first. He loved us first. So love doesn't come from us. Love comes from God. And then because of that, we can then love God and love other people. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that needs to come into play here when we talk about this idea of self-love, that love ultimately doesn't come from self. It's made manifest uh, through God loving us. Yep. So even going back to the airport or the uh, airplane analogy yeah. with the mask, right? Like you are not the one who provides the mask. Or right? the air. Or the air. The or air the that oxygen, you breathe. Right? Absolutely. That comes from another place. To, to use that analogy, right? The plane becomes God. In that and analogy. God's the one who, who then provides. Right. And we love him and we love other people. Yeah, and I even think that like the love that we think of mm. is so different when we look at the love that he gave us. Yeah. Like mm. if we look at 1 Corinthians 13 when he describes love, mm. love is not rude, it is not mm. self-serving. Or if we wow. were to look at... You could stop right there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we could real. end the podcast on that right there. Love <laughs> is not rude, love is not self-serving. Self, love and self-care, disproved. Yeah. yeah, if we even look at the words that God uses, sure. like John 3.16, we all know that verse. Yeah. God so loved that he gave. gave. He gave. Ephesians 5, husbands love your wife like Christ, yep. love the church and yeah. gave. gave, or even Galatians 2, he loved me and gave. Mm. Yeah. We don't think of giving as being that part of love. Right, sure. Right. And really so, kind of to, okay, let's bounce off that and go one step further yeah. then. The greatest form of love is not loving yourself, but it's actually self-sacrifice. Mm. Mm. And so, Lauren, I know you want to talk a little bit about this. Yeah about what the Bible then instructs us to do then. Yeah. Yes, so um, I would like to turn to Romans 12. Romans yeah. 12. We're going to be going to Romans 12 a lot in this conversation because it has so much to do with loving people. So Romans 12. I'm going to look at verses 1 and 3 specifically for this point. So Romans 12, 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Mm -hmm. Then verse 3, he says, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Mm -hmm. So in that verse, we see sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Our life should be a sacrifice to the Lord, a complete offering of our whole entire self to him, to who God is. Sure. So I think that really starts it off with the sacrifice that you went to. Yeah. And then I want to turn to Luke 9, Mm -hmm. Luke 9, 23. Absolutely. We see in Luke 9, 23, Jesus is talking and he says, and he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, Mm -hmm. take up his cross and follow me. The word deny there in this passage, Mm. it has this sense of do not give attention to. So he's literally saying, don't give attention to yourself. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. So clearly in this verse, he's not saying, follow me if it's easy. Follow me if you've had enough me time. Mm. Follow me if you've had enough time alone or if you're feeling good. Mm -hmm. He's saying, take up that cross and follow me no matter what your feelings are saying. So does the Bible tell us to love ourselves? No. It actually tells us to deny ourselves. Mm. Well, I feel like this is just one of those examples where Jesus just takes the cultural norm and then just flips it up on his head. I mean, he, you know, he who seeks to save his life must mm. lose it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jesus says, if you want to find life, first you have to lose it. If you want to find victory, first you have to surrender. Yeah. The secret to love comes from God, mm-hmm. yep. deny yourself. It's not yeah. about you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Crazy. <laughs> it's 
so so good. <laughs> um, so let's dive into that a little bit. Sure, sure. Like, what does it mean to then deny ourselves? Okay, so yeah. let's get some practicality. If, yeah. If the Bible doesn't teach self-love, but it teaches self-denial, right? Which sounds really bleak, and it's not. <laughs> it doesn't. Not necessarily a feel-good message, right? right. Mm -hmm. But if that's what the truth says, then mm. then how do we actually deny ourselves? Sure. Yeah. Um, so let's turn to Philippians two, and we'll, we'll look through a couple things, uh, and then because. Philippians 2 is the, is the prime example, yeah, right, yeah. In this, and from it will hinge kind of all things. Uh, Philippians 2, specifically uh, verses 3 and 4, says this, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also, also to the interests of others. Wow. Really, we're talking about this concept of humility, right? Like yeah. that's what this passage is all about. It takes Jesus as the prime example of humility. Uh, so, what are some practical things that it looks like for for humility? Yeah. So, I think we could even look at our self esteem. Mm. Sure. Um, yeah. Because what we are before Christ is we're sinners, mm. and even our good deeds are like filthy rags mm. but our value and our esteem as we're esteeming others better than self our esteem comes from what christ did for us mm -hmm. on the cross that yeah. he has saved us and redeemed us and is sanctifying us to mm. be like him so our value our self-esteem yeah. comes from christ alone mm. Mm. yeah and and out of that i would say that we have to be careful not to swing from one one end of the spectrum mm -hmm. to the right, other right right um, because when we say the bible doesn't teach self-love it doesn't mean that we go all the way to the other end and say, oh, that must mean that I'm, I've got to self-harm myself. Sure, sure. No, absolutely not. Mm. Humility is kind of this sweet spot. It's, mm. it's the middle ground where, uh, you know, the common quote is this. It's, humility is not thinking less of yourself. Mm. It's thinking of yourself less, mm. yeah. like less often. So yeah. to your point about self-esteem, it's not degrading yourself as, well, I'm, I'm nothing yeah. and woe is me, but rather it's, I'm, I'm going to prefer others, like mm -hmm. Philippians 2 talks about. Not wow. just looking to your own interests, but looking to the interests of others. Love it. So it becomes outside of yourself. Yeah, Yeah, and I think that Romans 12, again, I said we'd be there <laughs> a lot. Absolutely. Romans 12 has a great description. After it tells us to live as a sacrifice, it describes what it's supposed to look like. Mm. So mm -hmm. what does it look like? Look at Romans 12 starting in verse 9. I'm just going to read through a bunch of verses here because it's yeah. so, it's convicting every single mm -hmm. time I read it. Mm -hmm. So verse 9, let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, and mm. hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Yeah. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Mm. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, mm. but give thought to do what is honorable in the mm. sight yeah. of all. Love it. I love it. I mean, there's just like so many good blips in there outdo one another in showing honor yeah. let love be genuine yep. right like that's just that's i mean i don't know about you but sometimes it's easy to like love someone but there's like an element of being fake behind it right or yeah. if i ask you drew in the hallway hey how are you doing today nine times out of ten when someone asks you how are you doing do they really want to know like if yeah. you came up and yeah. asked me how are you doing and i was like Oh, let me tell you all about it. You're like, oh boy, what did I do? <laughs> I didn't ask for all that. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. But I just love like those little blips there in Romans 12. Like, let love be genuine. Mm. Outdo one another in showing honor. It's very others focused. That's the key right there. It's, it's others yeah. focused. It's others focused. It, you notice how much it's yeah. focused on showing the affection to brothers and different things like that. Like that is the. So we talked a lot about self-love. I do want to hit self-care. Um, yeah. So let's hit self-care uh, in the little time that we have left. Um, so let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, and let's talk about what the Bible has to say about self-care. Maybe a misinterpreted passage, if you got it. Yeah, absolutely. 1 Corinthians 6, um, we know it well. Uh, it's uh, anybody who's grown up in church uh, 
or if you haven't grown up in church, right? you've probably if, heard it. If you haven't, you may have heard sure. you know, Christians use this term, yeah. but uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20 say this, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the mm. Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, yeah. for you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. The common misconception is this, that, oh, my body is a temple, so I need to take care of it. Right, right. Right? Like, I mean, we so I need to binge Netflix. Yeah. Right? I, need, I need me time. Yeah, you know, yeah. I need to take care of myself. You know, sure. I can't ever get tattoos. That's a whole other topic, right? But that's like, my body's a temple. Sure. Yeah. Um, but what we, what we do is just sometimes to, just we... Just to reiterate, you are not saying that they shouldn't get t- tattoos. No, no. that's no, an no. old <laughs> conversation, but I'm not saying that. People use that <laughs> argument, right? Um, it, but the idea is, is this, we disconnect verse 19 from mm. the rest of the yeah. passage. This yeah. whole context of the passage is talking about uh, sexual morality and actually mm. fleeing yeah. from it. And so the context is, hey, don't commit this sin. Flee from this sinfulness because, mm. key verse, verse 20, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Mm. Yes, your body is a temple, but that temple is not your own. Mm. Yeah. You belong to Christ now. For those of you who have placed your faith and trust in Jesus, you belong to him. So the imperative is then to glorify God in your body. And that's where I think we get things mixed up. Right. Now, Deny now, sinfulness. Right. Now, the, the Bible is saying you're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Yeah. However, we are looking after these, this temple, this, this body. And so what does that look like, yeah. being a steward? Yeah, absolutely. And I think you just brought up the, yep. the key phrase. Sure. Is the Bible, again. It's like it was in my notes or something. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not that we swing from the self-love, self-care all the way to, well, I'm, I'm just going to self-harm myself and I'm not going to care at all. The, body, the Bible teaches right. stewardship. Yeah. That because you are bought with a price, you steward your body well. And I've, mm. I've heard it said uh, this way. That stewardship is simply this, recognizing that everything we have and yeah. everything we are is a gift from God hmm. and being grateful and generous with those gifts. That is the biblical idea. So, again, we're coming at this self-love and self-care and just saying, hey, let's just, let's just rethink this and bring it back to a biblical perspective. Yeah. And I think there is some stewardship aspects Absolutely. in the self-care. I think culture sometimes hijacks self-care yeah. and makes it again going back to the beginning all about me and my happiness yep. whereas the bible teaches hey self-care is it is equated more with stewardship than anything both mm. body and soul yeah yeah so so i mean we talked a little bit about uh stewardship tell me what would it look like practically speaking stewardship on a daily basis like what what does any of this look like practically because i'm thinking right now like it's hard for us to ignore. There's 300 students sitting out here in a dark room, right? And they're probably thinking, yeah, this is great, but what does this mean for me? Yeah. Like, and, and, how, and how can I use this? So what would practical stewardship look like? What would it look like for me to, to take care of myself yeah. and not just, you know, like we use the excuse, I need some me time to yeah. get some rest, and then I go back, and it's like, I just played like five hours of Minecraft. <laughs> is that really restful? Yeah. yeah. I mean, some, I'm sure there's some out there like, yes, absolutely. We'll, we'll touch on that for sure. Yeah, I think yeah. this, this sounds cliche and it sounds churchy, but yeah. it, we love it. it's, it's what the Bible teaches mm. and it's spiritual disciplines. Preach, come absolutely. on. Like spiritual disciplines are important. Um, there are a reason they're called disciplines. Is, yes, they're hard to do, but they are very, very <laughs> important, especially for our life as followers of Jesus. And so simple things like spending time in the word of God, yeah. right? This, this book has everything that we need pertaining to life and God. godliness as, as second Peter says, first Peter, one of the Peters, yeah. right? Says that, um, <laughs> but Psalm 19 talks about this, yeah, yeah. right? It talks about your word and, and yeah. bringing life to yeah. our souls. And so Absolutely. spending time in the word is important. Mm-hmm. Um, something that's, uh, been a little bit lost and maybe forgotten this I, I know it has been for me and it's been a, a really hard work for me is scripture memory sure yeah. um psalm 19 talks about the fact that i've i've hidden my it, hidden your word in my heart yeah. that i might not sin mm. against you yeah. the, the importance of taking the truth of god's word and yeah. 
and hiding in our hearts, internalizing it so that's something that we're meditating on. Yeah. Joshua talks about that. Mm -hmm. Meditate. I meditate on your law day and night. So yeah. scripture memory is huge. Yeah. First Thessalonians talks about prayer. Yeah. I mean, the, the verse in First Thessalonians is pray without ceasing. Yeah. Um, you know, not like a monk that carries around a board and like mumbles to themselves and hits himself in the head every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, whatever you practice that? I'm speaking in tongues. No, um, I'm joking. I'm just uh, but it's this idea of having a conversation with God, right? Like I've heard it said one, you know, in, in some way, prayer is thinking deeply about things in the, prayer, in the presence of God. And mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's bringing those things to the Lord. And then uh, we talk a little bit about fellowship. And mm -hmm. I'm going to let Lauren elaborate a little bit on this. Like the gathering of the biblical community and fellowshipping other believers is so important, yeah. but it's not just yeah. the gathering. Something you're very passionate about having worked as a youth pastor for what, seven years? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think one of the, the spiritual disciplines we forget about. Come, come oh, on, I mean, seven years is a long time. <laughs> That's a long time. But I think one of the spiritual disciplines we forget about is using our spiritual gifts to build the body of Christ. Mm. Yeah. We... I run into this a lot, and honestly, in my own life, I have seen me, I want to think when I serve someone or when I am outputting, that it is completely not helpful to my own mm. uplifting and filling up. But if you look at, at Romans 12, I won't read it for the sake of time, mm -hmm. but those beginning verses, right after verse 3, verses uh, 6 through 9, mm -hmm. you see that every member of the body is given a different gift. Yeah. yeah. And if we don't use that, we're not pouring into our, or we're not letting the Lord pour into us. Like, I think when I was an RD, I thought, mm. this is so hard because I'm working all the time. It wasn't until the Lord convicted me that mm -hmm. I am not taking joy in the fact that God is radically changing these people's lives to look more like him. Mm, I'm not sweet. taking joy in the fact that I'm getting to use my gifts and see the Lord use me. Yeah. And so it's not till the Lord changed my perspective that my mm. long to-do list mm. went from, despair and so hard work to joy joy right, in his yeah. presence and his strength what's yeah. even cool as you're talking about spiritual gifts again we think about spiritual gifts and we think wow look at all these things that the lord is giving me 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 and god says uh uh, uh i want you to use that spiritual gift for others 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 and yeah. it's just like this conversation we're talking about self-love self-care no really deny yourself live for others like outdo one another in showing honor so so we talked a lot about stewardship of the temple as far as self-care is the, our body being a temple, right, and taking care of ourselves. Let's talk about this topic real quick of rest. Like, let's hit it, let's hit it quick, yeah. but we got it, rest. What does biblical rest look like, mm -hmm. and how can I be successful in resting? Yeah. Lauren? Yeah. Yes, so I'm going to quickly, there's a lot, there's a lot it's in the Bible It's too much, and we've got no time, and there's so much. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hit the good ones. I'm going to quickly boil it down into five points. Boom. So, one, rest is, it, it comes from God. It comes mm. from the Lord. We see that all through the Psalms, and we see it in Matthew 11, Matthew 11:28. 11, yeah. yeah. Come to me, all who are weary and mm. heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Mm. Rest yeah. is not something that we manufacture. Mm. It's something that the Lord gives us. We so one, him, yeah. rest comes from the Lord. Mm. And then two, we see that rest follows hard work. Mm -hmm. If we think back to Genesis 2, and the Lord, he created the entire universe, six mm. days, Mm -hmm. And then on the seventh day, he rested. So six days of labor, one day of rest. Mm. Yeah. And so that was the Lord. He then stops and rests. Yeah. So one, it's given from God. Mm. Two, it follows hard work. Three, rest has a purpose. So when God yeah. stopped in Genesis 2 to rest, that word rest means to stop working and to admire mm. something that has been accomplished mm. so our rest is to stop and say lord you are great and you are amazing yeah. for all of the things that you have done mm. yeah. that's what our rest should look like and then we'll prepare us to work again yeah. but that's number three mm. and then number four uh, let me find my spot in my notes so sorry Four, work okay. is commanded. So we see in the creation order that God created the world to operate this way. Mm, Six yeah. days of, re of work, one day of rest. Yeah. So this is a command that he gives us to rest. And then lastly, this one is not often spoken about, but rest is supposed to be 
able to be interrupted for people and for God's work. Mm, that's like a cardinal sin for some people. Yes. You yes. interrupted my rest. Yes. Yep. My boss texted me on my day off, mm. even if it was just a smiley emoji. Yeah, and I think... Real life story, real life story. <laughs> so we'll share it on Too the true. next podcast. <laughs> but I think Jesus is a perfect example of that. Um, we see that in Mark 6. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had sent the disciples out. Yeah. And then they were coming back from casting out demons, preaching, yeah. all of these things that healing people. And so they're sitting down to tell Jesus, this is what we've done. We've been working mm. so hard. And Jesus says, you need to rest. Mm. Let's go away to a desolate place and rest. Yeah. Yep. And the people follow him there, follow them there. And when he sees the people, he sees that they were like a sheep without a shepherd yeah. and is moved with compassion mm. Mm -hmm. and serves them. And that ends up in the feeding of the 5,000. Mm. But we see that Jesus yeah. was interrupted for the work of the Lord. Mm. Yeah. And then goes and rests afterwards. Self-love, yeah. self-care. Jesus gets away to pray. Jesus doesn't mind being interrupted and then serving others. Yeah. Thousands of others. Yeah. Yeah. And he's yeah. our example. Yeah. You he know? Is? Yeah. That's huge. That's yeah. everything. Yeah. Drew, in the remaining time, Drew, Lauren, let's just talk about how, what does this look like? What should I do now? We've talked about the, the idea of self-love and self-care, what the world thinks about it. We've talked about self-love and self-care, what the Bible has to say about it. What should anyone in this room care, and what should we do next? Yeah, I think, I think a practical thing, and we don't do it terribly often, is uh, we talk about this here at the Bible Institute quite a, a lot when we talk about time management, is do yep. like a time audit. Mm. Yep. Basically, write down your schedule. Yeah. Where, where does yeah. your time go? Uh, because a lot of people complain that, well, I don't, I don't have enough time. I'm overworked. I'm underappreciated. Mm. All of this stuff. And then when you actually schedule out, okay, this is what I spent my time on in this past week, you actually realize that you have a lot more time than you think you do uh, because there's some, there's some wasted time there. And so uh, in the idea of stewarding, Right, everything that we have and everything that we are, yeah. mm -hmm. I think it's a good practice for us to just evaluate where's our where's our time spent, yeah. and then yeah. one step further would be then how are you using it? Sure, is yeah. it is it for the glory of God? Is it for your own personal satisfaction? Mm. Because that's a big part of this this as well. What what else? Yeah, and I think as as you look at your mm. day, when you're busy, mm. ask yourself what is the first thing that I'm going to cut out of my schedule if I'm busy? Because mm. if we're honest, a lot of it, yeah. a lot of us would say, oh, we'll just cut back on prayer time or we'll just cut back on yeah. reading the Bible. Maybe I'll get to it at night. In other words, yeah. when we're busy, the first thing to go is our time with the Lord. Yes, our yeah. lifeline. Right. We should be living from that. Yeah. And we yeah. cut it out. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, interesting, I'll share this. Martin Luther, who, who start, you know, known for starting the Protestant Reformation right in the 1500s, he used to pray for two hours a day, and someone asked him, Martin, what happens if you have a busy day? And he said, well, I'd get up early, and I'd pray for three hours. And I just think it's so telling, right? Because, again, when our lives get busy, the first thing to go is my time with the Lord, speaking with him, hearing from his word, and that's not restful. We're cutting out the one bit of rest, rest that we could have in our day, you yeah. know? The, the one where love comes from, right? We talked yeah. about yes, the first time, yes, like, the love comes from God, and we say, oh, I'll take less of that when mm. I'm busy, which yeah, really shouldn't be. Um, a phrase to maybe finish out, right? And yeah. a, a, like a sticky statement. Love it. Okay, what do we do from here then, okay? Okay, self-love, well, the Bible teaches self-denial. We, mm. we talked a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. uh, Self-care, okay, well, the Bible teaches stewardship, body and soul, mm. and all of that. If I'm going to boil it down to four things, we, we kind of collaborated on this, right? Yeah. Uh, comes back in some ways to Matthew 22, but then a little bit more, love God, love others, deny yourself, and be a good steward. I, I think those are the practical things that we would say, if you're going to walk away from here yep. uh, on anything related, self-love, self-care. Remember that. This is what the Bible teaches. I love it. To love God, love others, deny ourselves, and be a good steward. Amen. And with that, this concludes our podcast. I apologize to Chris Nicola. We have run out of time. Thank you.